The Assassin's Creed franchise, originating in 2007, has consistently developed and evolved since the release of the first game, paving the way for games of a similar genre that have been published since, and games that will be released in the future, which is ironic for games frequently set in the past. In today's episode, we will be playing through the newest addition to the series, Assassin's Creed Mirage, investigating how hard would it be and how long would it take to 100% the newest Assassin's Creed. Let's get into it. We start off Assassin's Creed Mirage in a dream as our main character Basim, and we are being hunted by something later identified to us as a Ginny. Now, according to Google, a Ginny is the first female born into the Weasley line for several generations and is a witch at Hogwarts school. I might have spelt Ginny wrong. Forget the Ginny for the moment. Oh, okay, sorry. At this point, we are a street thief and we make our way through the tutorial and prologue. From learning how to pickpocket... Not then. Then was not the right time. I am terrible at this game. I pickpocket the children. The grievous bodily harm... I got absolutely shafted. To petty theft. To grand larceny. That is... And finally, yeah, come to on, murder. Shank him. Ah, here she is. Lovely job. But most importantly... Cat! Oh, I can pet the cat. Oh, this game's brilliant. With the prologue done, we get the first achievement and move on to Assassin's Training, which consists of climbing walls and stabbing people with different sized blades. Oh, it's a, it's a hair. Oh, he's... He's just drowned himself. Baghdad! Now we're a full-on assassin, we head into the city, and immediately almost die whilst looking for treasure. No, don't carry! What am I doing? Put him down! Oh my, um... Twice, in fact. Uh, nice. Thank you very much. After walking around like a lunatic for a solid 15 minutes, we finally meet up with Roshan in the Bureau, and she gives us our first task and our next achievement. There we go. Ali Ibn Muhammad. Oh, I'm not even going to try and say that. We make our way to the harbour and meet up with Beshi. We agree to free Beshi's men from the harbour. Cautiously. Our approach should be a cautious one. I mean... Oh, oh, I didn't see you, buddy. Um, sir, let's, let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Okay. What the f... I got killed by a chicken. Let's try this. You know what? We're just going to go all in. I don't even care. This guy. Stealth attack. I'll take it. It's better than nothing. Okay, right, 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 right. Let's talk about this. Um, I'm not dead yet. What is? What do you mean he's got heals? This guy. Ooh, yep. Nope. Oh, the. Oh crap! Right, get out! Run, 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 run. Oh, I hit the wrong button, man. Oh, it's my last guy. Nice. We finally free the prisoners and return to Beshi. In exchange for our help, he offers us limited edition Golden Wonder Pog. Jesus Christ, I'm old. It's at this point I realise we only had two achievements in two hours of gameplay, so not wanting to make this 50 hour playthrough, I get a couple of quick wins on my way to the next main story mission, by tearing down a few posters and defeating a Shakaraya. Four in two hours, it's a bit better. Kill. I guess. Let's go, suck! An egg, you douche. We head to the prison and meet Fulad to free the leader of the rebellion named Ali. Finish you off. When suddenly, my game crashed. Well, there, there we have it, Chet. We load the game back up, break back into the prison, save this guy named Ali, who's apparently the leader of the rebellion, and then we get back out of the prison to bring an end to the mission. 
With Ali saved, we go on a murderous killing spree and hide some bodies in hay for another achievement. And then we very quickly fall to our death. Am I dead? My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. I haven't even been killed. My guy's jumped to his death doing a silly assassination. Oh, it's just frustrating. Oh. Notorious. State of maximum notoriety. Okay. I'm well checked. You know what? I'm glad that I died. We make our way to this fort to assassinate Al Ghul, and truth be told, I had no idea what I was doing. I managed to get into the fort okay, but it's all downhill from there. We spent a whole 35 minutes in this fort trying to figure out how to kill this guy, and in the end I, I still had to google it, but do you know what doesn't take 35 minutes? Something you could do in just a few seconds that would help support the channel. Can I just ring this bell? You know what? Yes, you can. It's that easy. Shameless plug over, we finally kill our ghoul and leave the fort, getting us the blood of a ghoul achievement. We also grabbed the potion collector achievement, but that didn't fit into the script, so uh, here you go. Where are you? Boom, he's dead. Sorted. Oh! Potion collector, nice. Didn't even mean to get it. Your wares. We continue with the main story and find a tailor to dye our clothes for another achievement. Only to find out that the tailors don't do that and I could have done it from my inventory ages ago. There we go, chat. Fashion statement. And not 30 seconds later, we kill some guards and get an achievement for getting more headshots than Johnny Sid. Headshots! Let's go! Nice little gangbang going on in here, shall we? We meet back up with Roshan and find out that three more bureaus have been set up ready to investigate our next murder victim. <laughs> Sorry, order member. On our way to one of these new bureaus, I decide to preoccupy myself with firstly becoming an actual assassin and killing people, pickpocketing the rich and giving to the poor, also known as keeping it for myself, and then finally spending some of my hard stolen tokens. That's another achievement chat, let's go! Once we finally made our way to the Bureau, we were asked to find out what happened to Ahmad ibn Musa from the House of Wisdom, so we made our way to his workshop. We found some clues, but eventually this kind gentleman, under threat of death, tells us to check out a nearby dig site. There are a load of enemies here, so we take this opportunity to destroy a man's horn, and no, that's not a euthanism, and use some rufalin to forcefully put some people to sleep. In the dig site, we found a clue to go to the Bimaristan, so we head there, find this special chest, get more kills with throwing knives, and murder a doctor. We find Ahmad, who had been working with the doctor, and ask him to return to the bureau. On our way back to the bureau behind Ahmad, we hide in some hay to brutally murder some enemies, use both of my brain cells to figure out this treasure map, My brain is fucking huge. And sit on a bench for a total of 48 hours without moving. Chet, I am such a good gamer. Look at how easy it was for me to get that achievement. I'm so good at this game. So good. It's One haircut, change of clothes, and a camera change later, we meet Tabid at the Bureau, who tasks us with locating and assassinating Al Rabisu. Go! Spy out this puzzle with care. But do not throw your blade at the symposium. We don't want to show our hand just yet. So as instructed to not show our hand, Basim attempts to murder this person in broad daylight in a room full of people. Fortunately for us, Al Rabisu goes to hide, so we follow him into a secret basement, disguise ourselves as a plague patient, and assassinate Al Rabisu in front of all of his guards, who suddenly then disappear. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's absolutely shredded. I need to get out of here. Oh, yes, Chet. Another Chivo. A 
eliminate Al Rabisu. It's at this point I got very sidetracked from the main storyline. So I got the snooze you lose achievement for digging in the pockets of an unconscious person. Let's go! Snooze you lose, baby. The up in smoke achievement for throwing fart bombs at people. Not two of them. There we go, chat. Up in smoke. And spend 20 minutes infiltrating and trying to investigate somewhere I can't do anything with until a later story mission. But on the plus side, we do complete our first tale of Baghdad by teaching a child how to kill themselves. Oh, crap. This kid's gonna die. Chat? We finally make our way back to the Bureau, where we are tasked with heading to Jar Jariah to gather some information on the Order. Long story short, an alcoholic lets us know that some slaves have gone missing. It turns out the slaves were rebels, so we free the rebels and murder the slave leader. Oh, okay. During this process, we got the achievements for throwing traps, being frugal, and paying merchants. On the slave leader, we found a letter to say that he needs to report to his bosses, but the bosses' names are in code. So, we've headed to the meeting area and got our achievement for using noisemakers, despite not actually using one. Oh, shit, I've got an achievement chat. Attention seeker. Ah, oh, nice. We head inside and find Al Ishma and Al Ruch, who are very quickly escorted out given that, you know, the person that they're waiting for is dead. We escape the meeting room and get the hardest, and by that I mean the least obtained achievement in the game, for assassinating guards whilst blending in. You know, just hey, being an assassin, let's go, really. Oh, we I also use this opportunity go. to fully upgrade Woo! our sword. With our weapon upgraded, we go to kill Al Rook, who was a lot easier than I initially expected. Yep, let's do that. Let's go, baby! With Al Rukh now dead, we make our way over to Al Aishma's camp, paying some mercenaries along the way, where we tag all of the enemies with Enkidu, get five kills with one assassin's focus, two, three, oh, chat, we've got it. Five, launch. One. Let's go! Unstop and we then assassinate Al Aishma and find out about Al Marikhwa. Our next order boss. A letter from we pass our newfound information onto the Bureau, who challenge us with eliminating Al Marikwa, who resides in this absolutely massive and reinforced base. We take out two guards and assassinate him for a much easier order member than I had initially expected. Too goddamn easy, let's go! We head back to the Bureau to hand over the feather of al and head off to do a contract. This contract in particular involved breaking into a hidden tomb, grabbing a Carolingan coin, and placing the coin somewhere for Dervish to find. Oh, so I can jump that, but I can't jump into that pile of leaves. I am tempted nice. to keep this coin, but I could never cross Dervish. Dervish. Uh, oh! Under the, what? That was number nine, excuse me. Oh, let's go, Chet. Woo! Cheers, let's go. On our way heading to the next bureau, we find our last musician that we need to pay. Chet, this should be. Woo! Once we get to the bureau, we're reintroduced to Roshan, our mentor from earlier in the game. They let us know that the Order are having a grand auction and they need me to find out who is behind it. We make it to the market, and despite brutally murdering a civilian and a number of guards, this woman willingly talks to us. No, but in recent times, they have increased the coin request. She lets us know that the Order are basically massive racists and only stop shipments from people of different faith or from elsewhere, and we obviously can't be having that. We find the merchants, one of which had a dead horse, and come across a trap. Sure. Oh, you're telling me someone murdered the horse. Well, I could have told you that, buddy. You figured that one out. Who sent you? You cannot 
Oh my god, they've just murdered that merchant. One, two, boom. Absolutely wrecked, mate. With the merchant saved, they've tasked us with assassinating Al Ankar, who ordered the trap. So, we walk into his house, unlock the door, eat his food, and murder him. Um, I mean, that wasn't what I came here to do. We then come across a guard, who I plan to dodge for 10 minutes. I tried to put this at like 10,000 times speed, but it literally crashed my editing software, so I'm just going to cut it for you. Hey, there we go chat, we got it, let's go! Ten minutes have just stood next to this guy with name Daniel. <laughs> We're then introduced to someone named Kong, who is apparently an old friend, but having played the prologue, I honestly have no idea who this guy is. Kong agrees that for a few favours, he can get us into the auction, which will lead us to their next order member. A few interesting favours, a sore jaw, and a horrible taste in my mouth later, Kong agrees to get us into the auction. We are hailed back to the bureau to fill Roshan and Rebecca in on my escapades. They ask me to attend the auction and buy a hairpin that we believe to be the target of our order member. We take our seat at the auction, but given that I'm as stingy in game as I am in real life, the second I'm asked to split with my cash, I say no. How much? 500! Now nah, I'll steal it, chat. Because we don't even need the hairpin. We're just here to kill her. What, what, why am I bidding on this hairpin? We steal ourselves a hairpin and a special brooch and grant ourselves a quiet audience with our next target. Oh, whoa! What? Assassinate me. Yeah, fuck it. Um, chat, I don't know what's happening. You know what, this is fine. Get back here, you cow. Sup, love. We return to the bureau and hand in the feather. With only the head of the order remaining, we deem it safe enough to let them live a little bit longer while we go out and get our final synchronization viewpoint. Show me the money! Yeah, fearless chat, let's go. Love to see it. Getting back on track, we've been given information on three people who could be the head of the order. Arib the poet, Muhammad the governor, and Kabiha the concubine. We start with Arib and just turn up at her house. Understandably, we're told to leave. He did, however, tell us to find some letters at the post office. We break into the post office, find Arib's post, and find absolutely Jackal. So, like any normal person, we ambush her at her poetry recital. We eventually find out that Arib has nothing to do with the order and we've wasted our time. On to Muhammad. We started at the court, followed a messenger, and walked straight into a police station. We find Muhammad, who says he is not the head of the order, and yep, apparently that, that's all I needed to hear. On to Kabiha. To get into the building, we have to steal this guy's clothes, which, in itself, gets us an achievement for collecting disguises. So, can't complain with that one. Once we get into this building, this woman, Makira, blackmails us into doing some chores, or she's going to tell the guards. So we complete her chores, and it turns out there was nothing in the office anyway. But when we come out of the office, it turns out the chores were to kill one person and frame the other one. And that was all in the bidding of Kabiha, the head of the order. Makira does, however, tell us exactly where to find Kabiha. We feed the information back to Roshan, getting us the final hidden one rank, and are tasked with eliminating Kabiha. Hey, what? Serving the light, what have I done? Reach the maximum hidden one. Oh, we've got an achievement chat, let's go! We break into the palace, my game crashes, and we break back into the palace again. We make our way to Kabiha's office, unlock the secret chamber, and find Kabiha. What is going on, Oh, we've... She's fucking dead. Okay. That Roshan? Yeah, who'd have thought? Right, there we go. What poison have you left at your lips? Roshan's just absolutely fucking murdered her. 
What did she mean, Roshan? There we go, chat. That's another achievement. We're taking out the head of the snake. The snake is fucked. Dead. Let's With go. Kabiha dead, we've taken out the order. But that's not the end of the game just yet. We head back to Alamut, where we completed our assassin's training, which has been overrun by guards from the city. We eliminate the guards, free our assassin friends, and head into the ruins to find go, our past. Open. Oh my Christ! What is this? Did you do that, Basim? Oh shit! It's in hell. I don't know about you, Chet. That we do, mentor. But I have no idea what on earth I have just witnessed. I, I've been paying attention all 19 hours and 25 minutes of this game, but I have no idea what has just happened. So if someone can explain that to me, please do so. Thank you. With that done. We have some cleanup for the last achievements, so we fully upgrade an outfit, collapse some scaffolding, fully explore all areas, wilderness, yes. hand in our dervish artifacts, Let's go! and hand in all of the scholar books, which brings an end to Assassin's Let's Creed go! Mirage. Well everyone, that was every achievement in Assassin's Creed Mirage and under 24 hours. Do you think you'd have the patience to do it as well? Give it a go, or if you've already done it, let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my similar challenge on Dead Rising, it's just as good. Thank you for watching my last video of 2023, join me in the new year for more challenges. Next up is a trip into the ether with Dead Space. Feliz Navidad and Prospero Años.